Assalamu alaikum. Bienvenue. Bienvenido. Welcome to the 2019 International Coffee House. Goshen's International Coffee House is about showcasing the diversity present in our, com present in our community. It's an opportunity to enjoy and celebrate some of the talents of our student body and learn something new about the cultures and countries that Goshen College represents. Speaking of which, we have some fun facts about some of the countries that our students are from and we'll be sharing with, with you tonight. For example, did you know that most Belgium waffle doesn't taste anything like Belgium waffle here in the US? <laughs> I didn't. So you gotta actually go to Belgium to taste some of those Belgian waffles. <laughs> or did you know that India has the largest number of vegetarians in the world? Be it for religious regions, reasons, personal preference, or any mixture of the both, about 20 to 40% of Indians are vegetarian, making it the largest vegetarian-friendly country in the world. And that's why only for India, KFC has made an exclusive vegetarian menu. <laughs> but before we get going with the show, I realized we breezed over our own introductions. My name's Naomi, and I'm from Canada. Mm -hmm. And my name is Deborah, and I'm from Democratic Republic of the Congo. But without further ado, let's start the show. First up, we have a crowd favorite with the Barnett Boys, accompanied by some live music this time around, followed by the Believe Group, giving you a beautiful song that transcends language. After that, we'll have Melissa Ma performing a captivating traditional dance, and end up this first section with Hajin Kim's rendition of Bohemian Rhapsody, a performance that's sure to blow you away. So, let's hit it up and bring on the applause.
go, go. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Hajin Kim, and I'm going to play a ukulele version of Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody, arranged by Jake Shimabukuro. I hope you all enjoy.
whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> that was amazing. Did you see that? <laughs> that was technically amazing. Wow. So, to continue the night, it's time for more fun facts. Uh huh. Did you know that Ghana was the first country in sub Saharan Africa to gain independence in 1957? Okay. And then Ghana was also ranked as Africa's most peaceful by the global peace context. That's fun. <laughs> that is fun. On a less peaceful note, but still a good natured one, did you know that Canada and Denmark have been good naturedly fighting over a small, uninhabited, resource free piece of land, essentially a rock called Hans Island, for decades? It's right between the two borders, and the way that they fight over it is either Canadians or the Danish will come and leave Canadian or Danish whiskey on the rock to unofficially state claim. Is that all funny? Actually, I would love to hear more about that, but after this program, you know, yeah. So, are you guys ready for next? Yeah. Yeah, woo! So we have Eptahel from Egypt presenting an outstanding history by focusing more on pyramids. I would love to know that. Also, followed by Yejin and Eugen singing a beautiful song, See Who. Last but not least, we have the crazy which I was, which Asian, will be presenting the amazing dance that will leave you in awe. Actually, I'm ready for this. So my friend just sit and relax. The show just started. After the break it down, we'll have a short intermission. Feel free to get up, stretch your legs, get some water, talk with friends or whatever. But most importantly, make sure you're back in your seats after 15 minutes. Or else? Hmm. Mm -hmm. But anyways, let's put our hands together and welcome in our next acts. Good evening, everybody. This is my very first international student coffee house, and I'm so excited, but I'm also so terrified. So we'll see how it's gonna go. Um, I'm a physics and mathematics double major, so my ideal subject to talk about would be physics, mathematics, or the universe. But you see, on your ticket it says international student coffee house, not at the Hell's Science Corner. So. <laughs> I can't do that. I, I tried. I can't. So we have to talk about something else, something related to the fact that I am from Egypt. So we have to talk about something beautiful. We can't just talk about what's happening right now in the country. Nobody wants to talk about that, not even Egyptians. It's, in fact, we try to avoid doing that at all costs. <laughs> so we'll talk about something so cool and inspiring. We're going to talk about the pyramids. <laughs> Okay, so you know the pyramids is this monument that every little kid has to go and see because we're told that people from all over the world has to come and look at them and admire their majesty. So yeah, we just go there at least once every year because it's like um, less than an hour drive to there. So every kid has to do that. Um, <laughs> I remember my first time was when I, when I was four and I remember looking there and, and just wondering about one thing. How did they move stones from large distances? Because it's so insane. I was four and I barely could lift a chair. I felt like a champion whenever I did this. But they did this. And you know, you see, like even adults, they, they are not, they, we can compare adults to those huge stones. So how did they do this? I believed for at least four years that ancient Egyptians were giants. But you know, uh, <laughs> You see, we have mummies, and uh, they are not giants. I'm wrong. So uh, how did they move stones? How did they do this? Well, this is our very first mystery. Look at this picture. It seems normal, right? But it's basically about how uh, when was they were moving stones, some people used to walk like in front of them and put, uh, put some water on the sand. So 
some, a team of physicists, I mean, you always have to count on physicists to solve mysteries. <laughs> so <laughs> a team of physicists decided to, to see if this actually would make moving stones easier for them. And they observed, the, they tried to have some experiments and see if they like, can come up with the right amount of water to put in the sand so it will be easier. And you see, when you have wet sand, it's, the friction is greatly reduced, so it's way easier to move it which is really nice. So probably this is how they moved large stones. Um, they weren't giants. So, <laughs> yeah. Now we can think about the next mystery. Look, let's talk about Khufu. Okay, so this is the largest pyramid of all the three. It's so huge. It's like when you're there, you just feel like you're nothing compared to it. It's just so huge. And for some reason, it only has two rooms. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense, right? You built something so huge and you only have two rooms. So for a very long time, Egyptologists believed that there's probably a secret room hidden inside, but nobody had access to it. And then another team of physicists tried to investigate the mystery. <laughs> yeah, always physicists. So uh, they, they used something called meons. Meons are subatomic particles. So the materials the stones of the pyramids are made from are these kind of materials that absorbs meons. So what do we need to do to actually use them to see if there is a hidden room or not is that we have to put detectors at the end of the pyramid. And we, we, we know how many stones uh, construct the pyramid. So we just have to observe the number of, uh, of meons that do not get absorbed and pass through the pyramid um, or like compared to the number that actually, so we, we have an estimation, but also we have to make the experiment to see what's the number. And the results were um, wonderful. The number we predicted was nothing like the number we got. It was way more than we expected, which means that actually there is a, a hidden room inside the pyramid, right there. So yeah, there is actually a hidden room inside the pyramid. And just think about that. For 4,000 years, there is a room that nobody has stepped inside. Imagine all the things that might be inside this room, and nobody has no idea about them. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful to think about this stuff. It's better than talking about what's happening right now in Egypt, right? <laughs> Told you. <laughs> okay, to our very final mystery. Look at this picture. It's beautiful, right? In winter, when you are in the right spot in Cairo or Giza, whatever, they are almost the same. For some reason, we think they are separate. Okay, so you can see this, and it's beautiful. And this is actually Orion Nebula. Those three stars are the Orion belt, and um, this is actually how they are supposed to look. We have this beautiful, gorgeous nebula. It's where stars are born, and this Correlation gives us a theory called Orion th Correlation Theory, which is about how ancient Egyptians built the pyramids so that it would correlate with Orion built. Um, so that they, they, because you know, ancient Egyptians believed in like reapers after death, and it makes perfect sense that they would build pyramids that are huge tombs so that people can be buried there and then they will be reborn again, just like stars. But you see, the cool thing about astronomy is that we can go back in time and see where, actually, where stars actually used to look, not just our estimations. And this never happens. This beautiful picture, oh, okay. Oh, this beautiful picture, um, they would have no way of knowing that it would look like that when they were building the pyramids. They had no idea, they couldn't have known. Stars were totally different than this. So this beautiful picture, it's what we get right now, but they, had no idea that this is how it would look at our time. It's totally a coincidence. They didn't mean it. <laughs> so, yeah, did I choose all of these things so that I can talk about friction, subatomic particles, and show you a cool astronomy picture instead of talking about Egypt? Uh, of course not. You know, Egyptians never do these cheesy things. We never do that. Well, uh, that's it for me today. Um, maybe next year I'll tell you more about King Tot's mysteries. <laughs> Before I leave, I think you should see this video.
تكتشف بلدك الثانية من أول وجديد هي دي مصر Thank you. Hi, my name is Ye Jin. I'm Ye Jin. We're sisters. And she's actually the one who made the cool posters and the Instagram videos. If you remember those, yeah. Yeah, um, we were trying to go get Hajin to do something with us, but over the summer or the fall, he watched Bohemian Rhapsody and got into dancing, so he, we kind of lost him, but we're happy for him. Yeah. <laughs> so tonight, we're going to sing a song called See Through. It's about this person who goes to a party, and then she's kind of tired of the whole social scene, but then she sees someone who can, who she can see through. Yeah. Hope you enjoy.
Welcome back. We hope you enjoyed that small break. But without any further delay, let's jump back to the evening. So, it's time for more fun facts. Are you guys ready? <laughs> First off, did you know that Nepal is the only country with a living goddess? She's selected as a young child and lives an isolated and secretive life far from the public eye and is rarely seen. Wow. Oh, that about 20% of South Korea population has the family name Kim, mm -hmm. which is about 10 million people. <laughs> okay, let's get back to the show. So first we, we hear from Star Arbonne, then Wolf by Yejen Ming Yujen Baker Dance Move. After that, Olivia Cops Copsey will treat us with some pros before we enter into the last segment of tonight's show. Let's round it up with some applause. Something, boy. Aren't 
Hey boy, make him whistle like a missile, bomb, bomb. Every time I show up, blow up, bomb. Make him whistle like a missile, bomb, bomb. Every time I show up, blow up, bomb. Boys been in line just to check out. Forget about the back. I'm a blow day breath like I'm a mind. I'm a money and my money and my mind. Yo, uh, it ain't really work if it felt. See me skirt, skirt, where they watching go, go, get it so hot, so hot. When the sauce gets to dripping, no lick. Got them big and give me some more. Baby, put them together, make the wet flow.
Good evening. My name is Olivia Copsey. I am a writer, a singer, a violinist, a photographer, and I am an Asian person who has a white family and has lived in the US for 21 years of my life. And I'm here because I want to acknowledge the beauty of people raised in the middle ground between looking international, but not being international enough, to highlight the important perspectives that these people bring to the table and participate in an event that I previously felt unsure of whether I could participate in. You know that saying, I don't see color. Well, the only time it was applicable to me was when I was in elementary school. Luckily, I was never asked whether I packed a dog for lunch or if I could help you with your math homework. I own three dogs and I'm horrible at math. But the understanding of race and stereotypes had not yet entered my world until fourth grade. I was chasing after a kid in the hallway when suddenly I lost them. I turned the corner and there they were doing that weird thing with their eyes that's supposed to make you look Asian. In that moment, I didn't even get it. I may have even done it back, which probably just made everything more confusing. <laughs> but when I got home, I realized that they were making fun of me and it was for something I couldn't even control. As I got older, I spent a lot of time trying to understand and appreciate a culture that I was not surrounded by and was not raised in. My mom shared about how she adopted me. I researched cool things about China. I tried watching more anime. I tried learning how to speak Chinese, coming away only knowing words I probably shouldn't repeat here. <laughs> and I searched and scoured the media for cool Asian people who made change and were leaders. I spent a lot of time very frustrated by existing in this middle perspective. I'd have people come up to me assuming that I spoke some sort of Asian language. I'd have people do the pointing thing where they try to guess where you're from. Wait, wait, don't tell me. It's Vietnam, right? You're from Vietnam. And the worst thing was finding that beauty in America was often defined as white, while I remained frustratedly and continually Asian. I remember thinking that it was unfair that I should still look Asian while inside I was as white as the person next to me. Asian people call that being a banana. White on the inside, yellow on the outside. <laughs> to be honest, I'm half convinced that when I was little, I probably thought I was a white kid. And then there's other things that come with being in this middle ground that are more difficult than the country of origin guessing and the mostly positive stereotyping. The difficulty is that I don't even consider myself a minority, while for many others, that is an ever-in-their-face reality. And the other difficulty is that when it comes to events labeled international anything, I always have to wonder whether I qualify. Fast forward to right now and why I'm on this stage. I wanted to participate in the International Coffee House, didn't know whether I was international enough to be part of it, and decided that there must be other people who feel similarly. I'm on this stage because I read Zach Bagley's article in the record about growing up as a black man with two white parents, and I was reminded that there are other people living in this middle ground with me. According to the 2010 US Census, 2.9% of US citizens, that's nine million people, identify with being biracial. I'm on this stage because I want to celebrate alongside those who have been raised in their home country with their own culture, while also celebrating the unique perspective, experiences, and empathetic understandings that come from not being quite white and not being quite X. And I'm on the stage because last year's coffee house, if you remember, was amazing. 
highlighting the gifts and talents of music, dance, and language from around the world, all emphasizing and reminding us of the strength of diversity. My name is Olivia Copsey. I'm a writer, a singer, a violinist, and I'm proud to be a person of biracial experiences. I'm proud of the Asian culture I did not know, and I'm excited to be part of International Coffee House. And now, contrary to what it says in your bulletins, I'm gonna sing a song. <laughs> um, I'm gonna sing Wildflowers, uh, the version by Will and Jennies. I chose this song because I think my younger self would have benefited from being told some of the lyrics of this song. Uh, when I was younger, when I was confused about belonging or knowing whether or not I did. Actually, thank you, Olivia, for your wise word. I and my friends here, Naomi, believe that many other students are going through the same thing to, in their life right now. Actually, international coffee house or international students or anything, it's not only about international students or people who are born outside of US, but it's about everyone, and everyone is welcome. Let's give another round of applause for the talents, words, and acts we've seen tonight. Moving forwards in the evening, we have a few more final fun facts to share with you all. Just a few more. 
Did you know that Dubai is not a country? Dubai is a city in the country called the United Arab Emirates. Dubai is not even the capital. Huh. Or did you know that Ethiopia follows a calendar that is seven years behind the one that the rest of the world adheres to? Happy 2012, Ethiopia! <laughs> Our last segment of the night begins with some masala magic from Eden and Meghna, after which we'll say goodbye to you and pass the torch over to the illustrious Dan Kuplichti and Sarah Zuni for the ISC Award presentations. Well, our job here is done. Thank you for being such a wonderful and supportive audience tonight. We've had a lot of fun with you, and you hope you thoroughly enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. Hello, I'm Eden. I'm Meghna. And we are Masala Magic. So for all of you who are wondering what our name means, it is actually a flavor of this really famous Indian chips brand. And I think it's our favorite flavor. Hmm? Is it? It's my favorite flavor. <laughs> um, I just want to say hi to my parents who are watching on the live stream from India. I love you guys. And Mama, I died my own sorry. Also, hi to my parents who are watching online. <laughs> oh, our song is called Peheli Nazar Me, which is just like, it's a love song about seeing someone for the first time and being all in love. <laughs> कैसा जादू कर दिया तेरा बन बैठा है मेरा जिया जाने क्या होगा क्या होगा क्या पता इस पल को मिलके आज ही ले जरा मैं हूँ यहाँ तू है यहाँ मेरी बात Ooh. 
Good evening, everyone. My name is Dan Lichty, and I am the International Student Advisor at Goshen College. This is my first year, and it's been a wonderful first year. I want to start by thanking you all for coming tonight. Without you here, this event would mean nothing to us, so thank you all for coming, and a special welcome to the group of admitted students who are here for Admitted Student Weekend. Thanks for coming. It's great to have you here. I wanted to point out all the flags above you here. These flags represent the countries of citizenship for all the students at Goshen College this year. And it's great to work at an institution that values diversity in all its forms. Tonight I'm up here to say some thank yous and to share some news about some awards that international students have won. We have four scholarships that are going to outstanding junior international students. The first award is the Manicum Scholarship. This is a $500 award provided by Tim and Sam Manicum, GC graduates from India. This award goes to a junior international student who has made notable contributions to Goshen College, to the community, and maintains excellent academic standing. The selection is made by polling of all international students and the Goshen College faculty. The awardee this year is described as, I quote, quiet, quiet but mighty, and I quote, humble and kind and generous. She is someone who enriches the lives of those around her by always being up for the task at hand without any complaints. The winner of the Manicum Scholarship for 2019 is Ye Jin Kim. Please come forward. Good job. The other three awards are from Raj Bayani, another GC grad from India. Raj set up this scholarship in honor of his enterprising and philanthropic grandfather, Prahlad Bayani, and it's called the Giving Something Back Award, and it provides three scholarships of $500 each. Similar to the Manicum Award, the Bayani Award goes to the junior international students who have made outstanding contributions to campus life at Goshen College and exemplify Goshen College's G core values. The selection is also made by polling the, all the international students and GC faculty. This year we have three awardees. The first awardee is described as someone who, and I quote, always wants to help, and who has embraced the opportunities of Goshen, both the college and the community, and has contributed mightily in both formal and informal settings. Another nominee noted that she is, and I quote, involved in campus life and always makes others feel welcome and comfortable. The first winner of the 2019 Giving Something Back Award is Mandira Panta. Is Mandira here? Oh shoot, I wish she were here, but we'll give it to her. On her way, oh good, okay, good. <laughs> I should have warned her to move forward, but I didn't want to make the surprise go away for her. <laughs> I should have warned you to come closer. Congratulations.
The second awardee is described as, and I quote, one of the kindest and friendliest people I know here, and someone who is, and I quote, active in the campus community and has always, has, always has time for a smile and a friendly chat. She is commended for being an extremely hard worker, supportive to her peers, and very open to learning as much as she can and improving herself. She is always positive. Another nominee calls her, and I quote, a calming presence among others who thinks about the subtleties and complexities of the world. The second winner of the 2019 Giving Something Back scholarship is Nitya Abraham. The third and final awardee is described as, and I quote, pure kindness. She carries sunshine with her and exemplifies not only Goshen's values, but what it means to be a light in this world. Another person said, I can honestly say I wish I had all students like her in my classes and in my co-curriculars. She is kind, generous, thoughtful, responsible, and mature beyond her years. The winner of the, the, third, the final 2019 Giving Something Back scholarship is Nassim Rasulapur. We should all wave to her on the camera. She's currently in, on SST in Indonesia, and she told me if her Wi-Fi was working tonight, she would be watching, so let's hope her Wi-Fi was working. If, if not, someone's got to text her. It's always a bit dangerous to start down the road of giving thank yous for an evening like this. Many more people, more people uh, have helped than we can really count. Um, to make this evening a success. We certainly need to thank ITS and all the related staff for their tech support and the events department for all they do. I do want to thank especially a couple of the people tonight. If you were at the dinner, we thanked her once, but I'm going to thank her again, and I'm not sure if she's here tonight, but Jessica Wicker and her team, who spent a huge amount of time helping students plan for the dinner tonight, taking individual recipes and scaling them up to serve more than 400 people. She then spent the whole week coordinating student cooks it's no small feat to coordinate nearly cooks making dishes for more than 400 people. Thank you to Jessica. I also want to publicly thank Andrew Hartzler. He's here tonight, and Andrew is a GC accounting professor who each year donates a chunk of his spring break and time beyond, and time beyond to help international students navigate the complexity of the U.S. tax system. I think I speak for all the international students when I say thank you for your generous support. It's fine. These events could not have happened without the Herculean efforts of the International Student Club leadership team. I'm going to invite them all to come out here to right now. You can go. You can go. I'm going to ask them each to introduce themselves, their names, where they're from, and what they're studying. Good evening. My name is Yejin Kim. I'm from Seoul, South Korea. I'm a junior studying music and Spanish. Hi, my name is Eden George. I'm from India, and I'm studying psychology. Hello, it's me again. My name is Deborah, and I am from Democratic Republic of the Congo, and I study nursing. Hello, I'm Nimoy. I'm from Nepal. <laughs> And I'm studying business. What's up? Uh, my name is Joe, and I'm studying computer science and a music minor. And I'm from Senegal, Kenya, and Zambia. Hello, my name is Hajun Kim, and I'm a accounting major. And yeah, I'm from South Korea. Hi, my name is Sarah. I'm a nursing major, and I'm from the Middle East. Next, Sarah is going to talk a little bit about the charity we're going to give money to this year from the proceeds of this evening, some of the proceeds from this evening, and she's also going to have a special message from other people, too. But before, I think the leaders have something for you. Yes. So, Dan, 
As you all know, actually, if you don't know, this is Dan's first year being our international student advisor, and he has been such, such a tremendous help, and he helped organize all of this, and it's just been great working with him. So we just have a little token of our appreciation. Thank you so much for everything that you've done. Okay, again, my name is Sarah, and I will tell you a little bit about the future of this profit we are making from this event. So, ISC fundraising is to be giving to the Student Benevolent Fund in Goshen College. The Student Benevolent Fund, which is managed by the Student Life, exists to help meet the one-time emergency needs for students, usually by providing grants of 200 to 300 per case dollars. This fund was created and is sustained through donations from alumni who want us to be able to provide emergency help to deserving students. The following information were received from Richard Aguirre, our community impact coordinator. To consider requests, students are asked to fill out an online form via Student Life webpage. Richard oversees the Student Benevolent Fund and consults with others in the Student Life to evaluate requests for assistance. Because Student life must be good stewards of this resource. They ask students to clearly describe their needs to provide receipts or invoices so that student life carefully evaluate aid requests. All information provided is held in the secretest confidence. Student life respond quickly to requests for assistance because they know that by the time students ask for help, they have probably exhausted other means of help. Just during this year, the Benevolent Fund helped a student with a concussion and no medical insurance, an education major student who needed to take state exams, another two students who lived off campus and didn't have the time or the means to get regular meals, and a fifth student whose insurance didn't cover their medical bill. Richards also told me that a 2006 Goshen College graduate recently made a donation to the Student Benevolent Fund. When asked, on the reason for donating for the Benevolent Fund, she said, when I came to Goshen College in 2002, I had no connections in the area. There was an occasion where I needed a winter coat, another time I needed funds for a doctor visit, and yet another time I needed a new tire for my car that got me into uh, my internship. I'm donating to this fund, so no students need to go into more depth to have basic necessities or go without because or go without them because of their income status. For all of you who bought tickets tonight, please know that your money is going to a good cause. You are investing in our future, whether international students or not. Finally, I want to send a special thanks to those who are watching via live streaming. Mom and Dad, you are probably sleeping since 3 in the morning, but you'll see this in the recording. Um, I am who I am because of you, and I can't be grateful enough. To all the parents, brothers, sisters, family, and friends abroad, we appreciate your support through the long Skype calls and all the sacrifices you have made for us. No words of appreciation will be enough. Give them a hand, guys. Come on. <laughs> OK. I have something else. So I'm a senior. I'm graduating. This is my last coffee house. Uh, something I always wanted to do is to take a selfie on stage. <laughs> so I said I'm going to do it. This is my last year. So here's the deal. We're going to take a picture first, and then I'm going to take a video. And I'm going to go from this side to this side. While I'm going, please make some noise, OK? Uh, ITS, can you put the lights on for the house, please? OK. OK, we'll do a picture first, right? OK, video, make some noise starting from there, OK? Wow. 
Wow, you guys are awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Something to check off the pocket list. So, <laughs> okay. Lights back again, sorry. <laughs> um, our final act, uh, please, after. <laughs> Way to go! <laughs> it's a good moment, guys. Okay, our final act. Uh, after this act, lights will go on. Uh, feel free to join us outside to hang out, get to know the performers, take pictures, etc. Uh, and our final act is a Bluid dance directed by Eden, Megna, and Priscilla. So give them a hand.
तेरे माथे झूमर चमके तेरे कानों वाली चमके है रे 